Unfortunately, uh, we have fairly devastating facts uh, about um, the police work and the intelligence work in Belgium. Uh, obviously, we had a terrible bombing there, over 30 people killed, close to 300 injured, a series of bombings, in fact, one at the airport and one in the subway. And, um, and it turns out that they had a lot of warning uh, and didn't necessarily heed it. Um, let me give you all the details. Uh, one particular story uh, starts this way, Turkey has accused Belgium of ignoring warnings about Ibrahim El Bakrui, uh, one of the two suicide bombers who blew themselves uh, and 11 other people up at the Zaventem airport, saying he was twice deported from Turkey last year and flagged as a suspected foreign jihadi. And that's according to The Guardian. Um, now, if you've got Turkey saying, I caught him near the Syrian border and I think he's a jihadi, I'd pay attention to that, that's pretty serious, right? Belgian officials have rejected Turkish allegations of inaction following, him, uh, following Ibrahim al uh deportation last July, saying foreigners suspected of fighting in Syria cannot be detained without evidence they have committed a crime. Bakrawi uh, was on parole after serving half of a 10-year sentence for armed robbery. No, I, that's, that's way too liberal for my taste. So. Here in America, we have warrantless wiretapping, it's unconstitutional, and they spy in on our lives, unacceptable. And they do it to all of us whether there's any suspicion or not. Uh, that's too conservative, too right wing. This is too left wing. You got a guy who is out on parole for armed robbery, you got an allied country saying these guys are crossing over from Syria, we think he's one of them, we think he's a jihadi. You know what you do? You get a warrant on that guy. Now I know Belgian law is different than US law. but uh, this, I'm saying, whatever your law is, that's the guy you should be able to track. That's the guy I want you tracking. I don't want you tracking random Muslims, refugees, whatever other category we've made up, because you're going to waste a lot of time doing that. This guy, you don't waste the time. Somebody told you he's a jihadi, they're trying to look out for you, they're your ally in NATO, right? And Turkey's not the only one as you're going to see in this story. My God, you got to track a guy like that. That's plenty of evidence to get a court order to say, hey, let me at least keep a tab on this guy. At least there was some admission here of, of not having done it right. Uh, the Guardian explains, but the Interior Minister, Jean Jambon, admitted there had been errors at justice and with the Belgian liaison officer in Turkey, adding that if you put everything in a row, you can ask yourself major questions about the government's handling of the Islamist threat. Well, indeed, we do agree on that. Uh, to be fair, that Interior Minister plus the Justice Minister um, said that they were willing to resign. Uh, the Prime Minister did not accept their resignation. He said, we're in the middle of a battle here and I can't have you resigning in the middle of that battle. Okay, if you say so, but there's more damning evidence here. Prosecutors also confirmed on Thursday that Ibrahim's brother, Khalid, uh, who detonated the bomb that killed 20, uh, people, 20 more people at Malbec Metro Station, had rented a flat used as a hideout for Paris attackers and was named in an international arrest issued on December 11th. Now look, if you got a guy who is connected to the Paris bombings four months ago, where 130 people were killed, and you've got a warrant out for his arrest, please, please go find him and arrest him. Please, that's not, that's not a right wing position, that is a rational position. That's called police work. Okay. In further evidence of connections uh, between the Brussels and Paris attacks, Police sources have said they believe the second dead suicide bomber at the airport was Najim Lach Rawi, 24, a veteran Belgian Islamic State fighter and bomb maker whose DNA was found on two of the explosive belts used in Paris. You got the guy's DNA from the Paris attack from four months ago. Up and at him, let's go investigate these guys. I don't want you to violate people's privacy and I don't want you to waste your time. But I do want you to do intelligence work. Privacy concerns don't mean that the police take it easy and, and, and take a lunch break for four months. It means find the guys who are most likely to be culprits, and these guys were it. Everybody's yelling at the top of their, their lungs. These guys are it. You got to go find them. That's at a bare minimum. So, look, I, I don't like the Donald Trumps of the world who are blaming all Belgians, saying Belgium is a mess. What does he know about Belgium? What does he know about anything? I'm not blaming the Belgian people here, and God bless them for being a, a wonderful progressive society and who's taken in people, etc. 
But you, you got to ask a little bit more of your police. They've got to actually go after the guys that they are concerned about, that their friends and, and neighbors have told them to look out for. This is uh, honestly, I mean, on these facts, it appears to be as shoddy intelligence work as I've seen. So, and unfortunately, I'm not even done yet. More from The Guardian. All the Brussels attackers so far identified by police and prosecutors have links to Abdeslam, that's the, uh, the organizer of the Paris attacks that was recently caught. Uh, Lachraoui traveled to Hungary with him last year while the Bakraoui brothers rented, as well as the Belgian safe house used by the Paris killers, an apartment in the Sharbik district of Brussels where Abdeslam himself hid for three weeks after the attacks. I mean, connection after connection. How much detective work would it have taken to go to these apartments and figure out what's going on? I know they were in the middle of doing it, and I know they caught Abdus Islam a couple of days before this bombing. But given that it, but it's not like it was just three days or even three weeks after the Paris bombings. They had four months to figure this out. All right, now we turn to Reuters where they explain several U.S. officials say that security cooperation has been hampered by patchy intelligence sharing by Brussels and why differences in the willingness of different agencies to work with foreign countries, even close, close allies. So now it's the Turks and the Americans who are saying, hey, we have some information here. Our counterterrorism guys were in Europe, wanted to visit Belgium, and they had information to share, and the Belgians didn't want to talk to them, apparently, the intelligence officials. Uh, the sources said that Khalid al Bakrawi and, Bra and Brahim al Bakrawi were both on the U.S. government counterterrorism watch list before the attacks. Now you got two different allies saying, watch out for those guys. Can we get a wiretap on them? Can we do any kind of intelligence to figure out who they are and to see if they're up to no good? Former CIA official and White House advisor Bruce Rydell then jumps in and says, add to that the problem of two languages, French and Flemish, lack of Arabic speakers, and weak coordination between national and local government. You have a huge discrepancy between threat and response. And look, I know there's a lot of different languages uh, inside Europe. You got to be able to communicate with one another. That probably is a little unfair. I, I'd be surprised if that was uh, anywhere near the top of the problems. Um, but if you ha don't have enough Arabic speakers, that is a problem. And that's if these guys are speaking in Arabic and you're going to do intelligence work, you need Arabic speakers. Don't be a Don Rumsfeld who fired all the Arabic speakers as we went to war in Iraq because he thought they were Arabist apologists just for knowing the language. Oh, yeah, yeah. Belgium, I'm begging you not to be as dumb as Don Rumsfeld. Okay, and finally, The Guardian says, faced with some 300 locals who have fought in Syria, Belgium is the biggest European supplier of foreign jihadis in relation to its national population of 11 million people. There's 300 other guys in Belgium who fought in Syria? I'm begging you. Look, it's called a wiretap. Okay, what other resources do you need? Can NATO help? Can someone help? Let's follow these guys. I don't want you wiretapping all the Muslims. I don't want you following every refugee that comes in. But if you got a list of 300 guys who already fought as jihadis in Syria, can I get a court order? My answer is, of, of course, of course you can get a court order. Follow those guys. Not, a lot of them might be done with it. I mean, here in America, we'd send them to Guantanamo, they'd never see the light of day again. I'm not saying that's the right solution. But if you're going to let them go and say, hey, they didn't commit a crime in Belgium, at least track them so stuff like this doesn't happen. We've got to find a, a reasonable balance in how we fight terrorism and protect our privacy at the same time. America has not found that right balance. Unfortunately, Belgium on the other side appears not to have found that right balance either. That's the reality as we see it.